Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today I wanted to talk about uh, 3D printing cases for split mechanical keyboards. So if you're coming from the more general mechanical keyboard community, you're not really going to be very familiar with um, this kind of 3D printing cases. Um, I have seen some builds out there that do use 3D printing cases, but they are in the minority. Whereas in the ergonomic keyboard community, you're either going to get like a plate case like this one, or you're going to get a 3D printed case if you want like a high profile case or if you want to hand wire your build. All right, before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about tenting. So tenting is where you put like a little bit of an angle in between your desk and your keyboard. So instead of lying flat on the ground, it lies at an angle instead. And this will help you type a little bit more comfortably. All right, so let's talk about some benefits of 3D printing your own case. So I'd say the main benefit is the options and customizability it allows. I don't believe there is a one size fits all keyboard out there. I don't think there ever will be. So 3D printing your own case gives you the ability to choose or create the ideal keyboard for you. You can choose a keyboard that's the most comfortable for you, that has the looks that you like the best. So there's a lot of, you have a lot of agency over the look and feel of your keyboard. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how I customized my own personal keyboard. So here I have my tenting rack. It's 15 degrees. This is where you adjust the comfort of your keyboard. Some people like steeper angles. Some people like more relaxed angles. I find 15 degrees to be most comfortable for me. That's why I'm using 15 degrees. All right. Second, a second customization is more relevant towards uh, somebody interested in like a wireless build. Uh, so this is a wireless build. Um, generally. People doing wireless builds, they have, they put the battery underneath the microcontroller. You can fit like a 100 milliamp hour battery in there. Um, I, it lasts you about a week. Uh, I wanted a bigger battery with better battery life, so I edited this case to put a slot for a battery underneath the PCB. Uh, this is a 2500 milliamp hour battery. It'll last me about half a year. So this could be a consideration for somebody interested in doing a wireless build who wants better battery life. All right, the final customization I did, of course, you might have noticed already, is I painted my own case. Uh, now painting does take a little bit of effort. You have to sand the whole thing, um, and then you have to do go in with the primer, two coats. Then you have to go in with the paint, and, like do like two coats, and then Optionally, you can coat it with like polyurethane, which I did. So um, there's a bit of effort involved, but this is where you can customize how it looks. All right, I want to take a quick moment to show you guys where you can find some uh, case designs that you can print out. So here we're on the Thingiverse page for the Lily 58. So you have several different case options. We have um, a tented case. We have high profile big bulky high profile case you have like a pretty normal looking high profile case you have like a more low profile case we have tenting legs we have like a little tenting rack so there's tons of different options here you can choose one you like um, you can edit some of these or you can even create your own all right another benefit to 3d printing cases is sound so play cases which most Split keyboards come with in their kit. Uh, they're generally pretty high pitched, pretty cl pretty clicky. High profile cases generally produce a sound that's uh, deeper, that's thockier, um, more low pitched rather than high pitched. So if that's something you like, uh, definitely consider a 3D printed case. Now I'll play a couple examples to show what I'm talking about.
the sound test of the alpacas in the stock Lily 58 plate case, the stock Lily 58 3D printed case, the modded, so the three mods, the P foam tape mod and foam on the bottom, the in the stock plate case and in the um, 3D printed case. So as you can hear in the stock cases, the plate case and the 3D printed case, um, the sound was quite different actually. The 3D printed case was quite deeper, um, quite a bit thockier. The stock plate case was kind of clicky, pretty high pitched. Uh, whereas the modded case and the modded 3D printed case, um, they sounded quite similar actually. Um, the upside to using a 3D printed case with a modded, uh, the modded 3D printed case is that in the modded plate case, you can kind of see everything you did. You can see like the tape, you can see the shelf liner used as a foam. Um, with the 3D printed case, you I mean everything's hidden, so that could be an option if you want to mod your keyboard a bit, but you don't want everybody to see uh, the mods you did. All right, so final benefit I want to talk about is price. So um, if you already have a 3D printer, of course, 3D printing a case is going to be very cheap. It's just going to cost you the filament. But even if you don't have a 3D printer, it's really not expensive at all to 3D print your own case. So this case right here uh, for both halves, you, s it's, you can see this case is high profile. It's very bulky. It's very thick. Um, the Lily 58 is already a big keyboard in the first place. Um, I even got this quite infilled. It's 80% infill. And this whole thing just cost me about uh, $24, $25, somewhere on there. So we can he as you can see, this, this is quite inexpensive. And this $24, $25 is going to be one of the more expensive prices you're going to pay. Um, for my Curia, for example the case and the I even got the plates 3D printed they only cost me about $20 total for both halves so it's very it's very affordable all right let's talk about problems with 3D printed cases so I'd say the main problem is build and I don't mean build as in it feels flimsy or anything actually these feel quite uh, durable but I mean build as in like you can't really get you can't you're not going to 3D print a aluminum case. You're not going to 3D print like a steel case or something like that. You are going to get a plastic case when you 3D print. And it's gonna feel like plastic because it is plastic. You can use different kinds of plastic, but it's gonna be plastic. <laughs> um, it's not gonna feel like aluminum. In effect, you kind of just get what you paid for. Um, you get a, I paid $24 for this case. I'm going to get a $24 case. If you're going to pay $150, $200 for an aluminum case, then you're going to get a more premium feeling case. Um, so basically, you're just getting what you paid for. All right, the second problem is, it's not really a problem in that it's unfixable because you can't fix it. There are going to be imperfections when you 3D print something. Um, there's going to be lines, uh, and you you can fix this by just by uh, by sanding. Um, I rec I really recommend an electric sander. Uh, I don't I don't recommend sanding by hand. Um, I sanded my Curia by hand, and it wasn't fun. But you can sand by hand if you want to. Um, I don't rec I, again. I don't recommend it, but it's an option for you if you want. If you don't want to purchase an electric sander, if you don't already have one. Uh, but again, this is a problem you can fix. So overall, I'd say the argument really boils down to two things. It's do you value customizability over a premium build? Um, personally, I value customizability. Um, so, and I, I'm not, I really don't care about like a nice aluminum case. I mean, aluminum cases are nice, but I, I value the customizability 
of a 3D printed case much, much more. Of course, um, you might be different, but this is just my personal opinion. All right, so thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, I'll catch you guys next time.